just get this out up here. Oh, let me plug my mic in. I know there's a delay. Just trying to make sure. Oh, that's interesting. What I see on my phone screen is different than what I'm seeing on my iPad. The other iPad. So I just popped on a minute or two early to make sure that I could figure out <laughs> how to do this. So I'm going to be checking comments here and making sure that I answer all the questions. I don't have comments turned on on my YouTube channel because I don't have time to, to answer uh, anything there and there's plenty of other places for people to find me. So um, if you use Procreate and you have questions for me, I have a private membership and I also have a public Facebook group, well an open Facebook group to my students. So definitely find me. Looks good. Oh, good. <laughs> All right, it's now exactly three o'clock. So I'll just wait like 30 more seconds. And I do have this, uh, my freebies page um, here so that uh, people can see um, all the freebies that I have, including some brushes for this particular art challenge. Hi, Veronica. Um, these are the freebies that I have so far this year, and then you can tap here to get to the last couple years, which is when I started uh, adding freebies to, when I started my newsletter and I started um, sending freebies out. So all you have to do is sign up for my newsletter and you get access to all of it. Um, somebody's asking if it's their speakers or if I'm talking quietly. I, I'm using my same setup I do to record my classes. So it might be your speakers. Can other people hear me okay? Sometimes I do turn away from my mic to look at the chat, but I'm trying to still make sure I'm close to my speaker or my mic. So yeah, Veronica can hear me. All right, hopefully it's, hopefully, oh, hi, Carol. Hopefully it's just volume. All right, we'll go ahead and get started. 301, and if people join late, I can answer their questions. Um, okay. So I'm just going to use the current uh, challenge that I just announced yesterday or the day before, Sunday, yesterday, Saturday. We announced it Saturday. And, um, and this applies to all the art challenges that I have done that I, since I started doing this sort of setup. And it helps me not only prevent overwhelm, but also... Um, just have a place to jot down my ideas for all of the prompts, even if I'm not doing a certain prompt. All right, so let's go ahead and, uh, and if you don't know the, the um, art challenge that I'm talking about, it's Earthly Elements Week. And you can find it on my social media, uh, in the Facebook group, on Instagram. There's a bunch of us collaborating. So definitely check that out. And I would, this is my setup currently, but I'm gonna start you guys from scratch. So let's say that you're prepping for one. Um, I'm just gonna show you how I do it from the very beginning. I go to uh, wherever I find the prompt list. So for this challenge, I have the prompt list right here. I can take a screenshot and crop that down any way you want to be able to get uh, a, an easy access uh, to the prompts list just have the photo um, or just write it down somewhere that's how I start and then I decide what size canvases do I want to start with 
or do I want all of my prompts to be on? Am I thinking I might want to print these? Are they going to be repeat patterns and they need to be squares? Um, if I'm printing them, you know, am I going to go any bigger than an 8 by 10 realistically? And you're going to create canvases that are the size that you want. Do you want a landscape or portrait? Do you want them all to be the same? Um, so let's go ahead and just start with a square since we have a square for the snapshot that we just did. So you can, um, if you already have a square in your list, you can do that. Or you can, if you're brand new to Procreate, just tap that little plus sign. And in dimensions, I go to inches. And I'm just going to go to 10 by 10 just for this prompts list canvas. Always 300 DPI. I do this color profile right here under display P3 and tap create. And now I can tap the wrench tool, add, insert photo, and grab the photo. It's going to be tiny. This part doesn't matter. Uh, just, it's just for reference. Okay, so that's kind of just something that I can easily refer to. Now the part where, okay, what size do I want all of my canvases to be? I'm going to tap the plus sign, tap the plus sign again. And let's just say I want them to be 14 inches by 11 inches. So I'm going to inches, width is 14, height is 11, 300 DPI for good print quality. And if you have an iPad that doesn't give you very many layers, you can go to fewer layers or a few, uh, smaller canvas size to get more layers and tap create. The next thing I think about is uh, a personal challenge that I want to give myself for that drawing challenge. Do I want to create gift cards at the end with all of them so they look they need to look like a matching set. Um, do I want to practice different things like having a spot illustration or a full pa page illustration? Um, what kind of textures do I want to have as canvas textures on the whole thing? And am I going to use the same palette for all of them and things like that? So those are all things to think about. And one of the things I really like to do at the very beginning is prep the textures and, um, and make sure my textures are all the same for all of the prompts. So for me, um, I have a bunch of texture brushes. I have a whole bunch of canvas texture brushes that I give away in my classes. I'm sure some of them are in the newsletter freebies. Um, I'm just gonna pick craft paper. Oh, well, I should pick one that you can see easily on camera. Um, although I do turn the opacity down. I'm gonna pick speckled paper and then pick a gray. This part you can't really follow along with unless you have a texture. I don't think there's any good textures that come with Procreate. I'm gonna add a few layers and pick my size and cover the whole thing. This is gonna be recorded, so um, you can come back and watch this part once you get your hands on the texture brushes that you like. And then I'm gonna duplicate that. On one of those, tap the N and turn it to multiply. And on the other one, tap the N and turn it to color burn. And I like to group my texture layers together. Speckled paper. I never, <laughs> I never uh, label my, my layers, but it is a good idea. So we'll do that here. And then I'm going to come down to a fresh layer and pick um, any brush to get some color on. I have Earth Elements here. This is a free brush set to anyone who subscribes to my newsletter. And this is one of the challenges that I'm giving myself for this particular uh, drawing challenge, which is to try to use uh, this brush set for all my illustrations. So I'm on a layer below my textures and I just wanna get some colors, uh, a variety of colors. And this is gonna help me 
um, just adjust the textures. So I'm going to zoom in. Hopefully you can see that better. Let's get a deep color too. So now I'm going to go back up to my textures here. I really don't like all the gray and that's mostly from the multiply layer. So I'm going to tap on the M and lower the opacity. The multiply layer is showing up on our lighter colors mostly and the color burn layer doesn't. So I'm kind of turning it down enough where I feel like I can see the texture without it being really gray. If you can't adjust it low enough to do that, it might be because you chose too dark of a gray to begin with. Um, I like to go straight across when I choose my gray, but sometimes I go lighter or darker depending on the brush itself. Let's go to the color burn layer, and now I'm looking at the darker colors and making sure that I have a consistent amount of texture on the lighter colors and the darker colors by turning down the opacity on the color burn layer. So hopefully that shows up on camera. And then I can clear that once I'm happy with my textures. And I have a few layers down here below this. Maybe I want to start with more of a canvas color instead of stark white. And come over here to golden and just, just slightly change that. If you're going to want a consistent look, if you're not filling the whole page with an illustration um, and you want a certain canvas color, background color, it's a good time to pick that. I'm going to darken it just to make it a little more obvious. And the last thing I do is I go into the wrench tool and go to video and turn off the recording and purge all of that prep and turn it back on. So now all that scribbling that we just did won't be in your time lapse. So now let's go back out. All right, I'm going to select the prompt one the prompt um, canvas and the one we just made. So press the select here and tap the prompts first and then the other one and stack them. And then you can tap the X. Now we have a stack and you can label it earthly elements, elements, <laughs> lots of E's, and go into the stack. Now you can label anything you want. I have prompts here. Um, oh, I'm not going to label that one yet. There are only four prompts in this, so I'm going to duplicate this and get four. And actually, I'm going to do a fifth one, and I'll show you why in a second. All right. Since there's four, I'm going to call them these four and use this one for the other thing that I'm going to show you. So the first one is July 1st and 2nd. It's, so it's fire, water, forest, skies. So I'm going to title them. The first one is fire. And it's the first through the second. So the, that way I know the dates of when I'm supposed to post that prompt. The second one was water, I think. And that will be the third through the fourth. You can write earth, I'm going to write forest, uh, fifth through sixth, sky, seventh through eighth. Now I know what the prompt is, approximately. This one is kind of an open-ended prompt. I know the dates that I need to post them, so I don't have to keep referring to this. If I didn't have this handy, I could actually delete this now, but it kind of makes a good cover image for the stack. And then for the last one, I'm going to play with palettes. So this one, you can just have lots of fun or brushes, play with brushes and palettes and try to figure out what you want to do, uh, what you're, if you're going to try to stick to a certain palette. So here's the benefit to having this set up in advance. 
um, this particular drawing challenge, we have a Pinterest board for inspiration. Um, Kristen April Frey is a letterer and she's one of the hosts, so she has a lettering section here. And then there's an illustration section here. Please note that this particular challenge, you can be as um, simplistic or as complex as you want. Like, some of these are just so beautiful. Definitely don't copy anything here. This, these are not free use images, but let them be some inspiration. So you can look here and start thinking about getting ideas and maybe some palette ideas. And then say you get an idea for the forest one before, well before you're ready for the forest one uh, to actually illustrate it. You can come in and start sketching your ideas as messy <laughs> or as structured as you want. Mushrooms, fireflies, foxes. I'll go ahead and show you the one that I've been prepping. Uh, I've been prepping uh, for getting the, the challenge all going, but here's, here's my palette uh, one here. I do have a blue background on my canvases, but I think I'm gonna end up painting over the whole thing and sticking with, I'm not sure, I might stick with kind of these darker palettes up here. I haven't quite decided. Uh, I think I used approximately this palette with some of these reds on this initial art. And now I actually have some ideas for all of them that I sketched. So I'm practicing with characters. Oh, that's not looking very good on the screen. Let me turn this background layer off here. I'm gonna add some fireweed all around her. Her hair is going to be fire. I'm going to have a floating lady with maybe some ocean life underneath swimming around her. I'm not sure yet, maybe just water. This one, she's going to be on her tiptoes and these are going to be glowing. And here with cupped hands, I want birds, maybe birds on her um, eating seed out of her hands. I'm not sure how big she'll be, so I don't know if I can really show that much detail, but um, just to kind of symbolize the sky in some way. So that is my prep. And that's all I did. So now each one that I go into, there's already some layers under the textured layers and there's going to be consistency with the canvas color, consistency with the um, um, brushes that you use, hopefully, maybe consistent, consistency with the palette. Um, yeah, that's all I do. Are there any questions? This went way faster than I thought it would. <laughs> I'm just gonna look at the chat Oh yes, somebody's asking if you can use the brushes for things that you're selling. Yes, all of my brushes are for commercial use. Somebody's saying, don't forget to like the live. So are these algorithm things? I don't know these things, so. <laughs> Maybe that's an algorithm thing. I'm not seeing any more questions. No questions, no questions. Um, let me show you some more that I've done really quick. So here is one where I did all repeat patterns. I changed my cover image at the end when I had them all finished. So I have mid-century magic, one, two, because those were the dates we could post. I made sure they were all 12 inches. And when I was prepping, 
I was planning out to make sure I used different types of uh, repeat patterns. So this one's a scallop, this one is um, a toile de jouis. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. I have a half drop, um, so I just did all sorts of things. This was an advent challenge. Um, I did full illustrations. They are 14 by 11 like what I just prepped. And again, I did my cover photo at the end. I thought I had more here. Oh yeah, I do. I have another advent challenge. Folktail week. Probably can't see those very well. It's nice to do a little group image like this of all of them. I've used this in many things. All right. Hopefully that's helpful. And if you have any questions, find me on Instagram or in my Facebook group. I'm more than happy to help. I do have a membership um, where you can access every single one of my classes. I have my older classes on Skillshare as well, but my new classes aren't over on Skillshare. So all that's down in the links below in the description. And I will make sure, let's see, I think I can check. Yep, there is also a link to my newsletter um, to subscribe if you want to pick up those brushes. So once again, in case you came late, this is what you'll be looking for if you want the brushes that I just sent out uh, for this particular art challenge. If you're watching this much later, feel free to still grab them. Um, they're really fun to play with. So yeah, and this palettes one, you could call it palettes and brushes and and go through. What's really nice about playing with brushes is, is um, when you have a really good understanding of what a brush can do, then when you're wanting a certain look, that brush, you'll, you'll go, oh, I know what brush I can do that, right? And you can go grab that brush. And then also play with pressure, sensitivity, and how big and small, um, how they perform at those sizes, and all sorts of things. And I know we all have way too many brushes, but I promise that if you do this enough and really get to know your brushes or maybe make a favorites section of brushes and duplicate and drag and drop things into a favorites list um, that and you use them a lot, you'll get to know them. All right, I don't see any more questions, so I will go ahead and end here. Thanks for coming.